Yes, sir. <clears throat> the time is 6.30 p.m. in the Louisville Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of Tuesday, July 19th, 2016 is now called to order and there is a quorum present. At this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome our newest member, William Meredith. William, uh, welcome. We look forward to working with you. Item number two is approval of the minutes of the June 7th, 2016 meeting. Are there any additions or corrections? Uh, if not, may I have a motion to approve as presented? <clears throat> Move to approve. Move to approve, Mary Ellen. Second? Second. Seconded by Kristen. Those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Item, agenda item 3A and B will be read together. Uh, discussed together and voted on as one public hearing, uh, opened as one public hearing and voted on unless uh, there is a citizen or a commission member that wishes to have them separated. Item 3A is the final plat of Grabowski edition, lot 1R, block A. This is containing 1.822 acres. It is zoned light industrial, L1, located on the south side of Bennett Lane, it's approximately 1,200 feet west of Interstate 35 East. It's a portion being replat of Grabowski Edition, Lot 1, Block A. Item 3B is the final plat of Vista Ridge Business Park, West, Phase 7, Lots 1A and 1B, Block A. This contains 3.028 acres. It is Zone GB, General Business, located on the north side of Civic Circle. <laughs> approximately 225 feet east of Valley Parkway, being a replat of Valley Ridge Business Park West, Phase 7, Lot 1, Block A. Mary? Uh, good evening, Commissioners. The two plats have no variances being requested. Um, the first plat, Grabowski Edition, is a portion is a replat. They have, are adding some um, acreage to that lot. Uh, there's an existing building on that, and they are going through an engineering site plan process currently. The second item, B, uh, Valley Ridge Business Park West, uh, they are subdividing a lot into two separate lots. One of the lots is being developed for a Molly Maid service. Staff would recommend approval of both plots. Commissioners? Okay. Having no questions, uh, we'll open up public hearing now. Anyone that wishes to speak on either uh, item A or B, please come forward, sign in, and state your name. All right, having no one come forward, the public hearing is now closed. Uh, commissioners, comments, concerns, questions for us? Okay, then may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Okay, motion by, uh, we'll give Stephen, second by uh, William. Those in favor signify aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries unanimous. Agenda item four is public hearing for zoning. This is consideration of a zone change request from multifamily one, MF1, to a planned development mixed use that would be PD-MU on approximately 5.082 acres. It is out of the S. Luttrell Survey, Abstract 743, located at 3000 <coughs> North Stemmons Freeway, as requested by GNA Consultants, LLC, on behalf of H198 LLC, the property owner. This is case number PZ201607. One eight. Mary? Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, this is a planned development. Uh, currently, the property is zoned multifamily one. As you can see on the map, it's located on the northern portion of Louisville along I-35. It's surrounded by the Corps of Engineer property. Um, there is a rail station, our northern rail station, uh, located just south of this within walking distance. Um, <clears throat> the proposed development Actually, uh, the, the current use of the property is an RV and mobile home park. It has been used like that for the last 30 years approximately. 
Uh, the proposed development for this site is a new multi-story, so um, four and five story um, residential units, uh, multifamily. There will be approximately 308 residential units. Uh, there are courtyards uh, with amenities and a multi-story parking garage. It will all be one building uh, and built in at one time. So there will be no phasing of the development. Um, as you can see the on the screen, I keep wanting to touch it, but we don't have the overhead anymore. Um, there are several courtyards nestled in between uh, the buildings. Uh, each of the units will have a balcony uh, attached to it. There will be a pool, uh, an amenity center, um, as well as fire pits, patio tables, grills, water features, <coughs> uh, picnic areas, a roof deck, lounge, fitness area, putting green, doggy park and spa, play areas, etc. The proposed units range from 575 square feet to the penthouse being 1,713 square feet. Uh, the average, the building average will be 908 square feet. Architecturally, the building facade will have a combination of brick and stone with stucco, metal and wood accents, both horizontal and vertical articulations. Corner penthouse units will have tower features and rooftop terraces. There's a proposed multi-story parking garage, which I believe is about six stories with a rooftop deck as well. Um, lastly, staff is working on finalizing um, a secondary access point uh, with the Corps of Engineers to, uh, to this site. So we're currently working through that. There are five variances associated with this project, which will be considered by city council. The five variances are to waive the requirement <coughs> of a deceleration lane along a major traffic carrier, uh, to allow driveway spacing along a, along a frontage road of 145 feet in lieu of the required 230 feet, to allow a reduction in the required parking from two spaces per unit to 1.73, and to allow a 3.5 foot landscape buffer in lieu of the required 10 foot landscape buffer, as well as allowing ornamental trees in that landscape buffer um, in lieu of the required private property landscape requirements. Staff has no objection to these variance requests. Uh, the location of this development is within walking distance to the most northern DCTA rail station and creating a preferred transit oriented development with a higher density in this area is in alignment with the new neighborhood choices provision of the Louisville 2025 plan. Staff does recommend approval of the zone change request from MF1 to PD mixed use for the Tower Bay loft planned development. Uh, the applicant is here to give a presentation. Do you have any questions of me? I have a question. Yeah. So for the landscaping, um, I understand we don't have the the three, the ten foot buffer along the roadway, but are they exceeding the landscape um, requirements on the rest of the site? It seems like they have several open public spaces. Does that right. kind of so balance that out? I, I think so because um, that three and a half foot buffer that they are going to provide, they're going to use ornamental trees so that it fits and it looks like it belongs in that in that buffer yard. Then on the remainder of the site, they are adding additional trees. Um, in terms of the uh, courtyard areas, um, I'm not exactly sure if what kind of landscaping is going to be in there, but around, along the perimeter, they will be adding some additional trees on site. And the applicant is here to, um, I guess, explain more in detail the plans. Okay. So w one question about the traffic flow. Yeah. Um, with the new highway, any changes in that, or are you just talking about getting on 235 from somewhere on the core property or around Mill Street, or a little information about that? Um, this site doesn't really precipitate any of, I guess, of what you're talking about. This is basically the site will 
the frontage road will dead end into this site. Um, there'll be another access or emergency access point, um, which I think is shown on the... So it <coughs> stays the way it is then as far as access from the highway or from the front? Um, with this trail plan or the next slide, um, hopefully you can see there's a proposed uh, access point. It's outlined in red um, that goes from the Garden Ridge turnaround. There is a, an emergency access uh, proposed in that general area. That's something that we're working on currently. Okay. I have a question about the deceleration lane, Mary. Mm -hmm. um, the waving of that, it seems like there's going to be added a lot of, of traffic on the service road. And um, I think a, a deceleration lane would be helpful. I was wondering if you could tell me why we're waving that. Uh, the deceleration lane would be going into this site. Mm -hmm. So there's no one going past this site. So if you're on that road, you're going to be turning into the site. Okay. Um, and engineering has looked at it um, and, <clears throat> and basically stated that they are comfortable with uh, the proposed elimination of the deceleration lane to this site. Okay, thank you. Because of traffic flows. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Mary. This time we'll open up a public hearing. Anyone that wishes to speak, please come forward, sign in, and state your name. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, my name is Al Crozier, and I'm the developer on the proposed development. Uh, just want to introduce myself. I've been in the apartment uh, development business for 39 years, and uh, I've developed coast to coast, border to border, and uh, I've been working on this particular side off and on for the last 10 years, and. Uh, as you know, there's been all kinds of plans and improvements uh, uh, discussed for this site. And uh, finally, the moon and the stars uh, aligned and we were able to acquire the site. And uh, we're uh, very excited to have the opportunity to work with the city of Louisville on developing this site. I just want to say this is a very special site and deserves a lot of attention on our part, and uh, I'd like to introduce my design team. Eric Earnshaw is the senior partner with BGO Architects, and Bobby Dolick with GNA, which I think you all know. And we anticipate using a local general contractor in e construction, you know, Andre Nicholas and Charlie Nicholas, which they, they reside and their, their business is here in uh, Louisville. Uh, I would like to uh, request uh, the PMZ board to approve this PD for this development, but I would like to emphasize a few points, with, and I have a small PowerPoint show to sure. go through. Uh, one of the most important things that we're trying to do is work uh, with the linkage for the uh, DCTA trail system. And I, I, there was a, draw, a diagram of that earlier, but we'll get to it. And uh, we're looking forward to working with uh, 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 Bob Manahan with the Louisville Parks Department to have a you know, better use and linkage uh, to the trail system. Um, the improvements on I-35, as I live in Capel and drive that quite frequently, are finally, uh, you can see the end and the completion and it's gonna uh, in, enhance the uh, transportation and uh, also it's going to provide us conduits to supply the water and sewer to the site with their 
with their improvements, they provided conduits under the freeway, so that allow us to get to the <coughs> facilities on the west side, which are more able to facilitate our needs. Uh, the completion of the rep, and here you go, you can see, and this slide was on earlier, that the, we're anticipating completing that linkage uh, that goes up to uh, going north uh, across the lake. And uh, I know Bobby, I don't know if we, I didn't see the slide that he had, but the, the views from that trail are really spectacular, particularly in the evening and morning sunrise. Um, <clears throat> so, um, uh, the, with the recent completion of the rail system uh, connecting Dallas and Denton, it'll allow people from Louisville and other surrounding areas to come and use the trail system and all the lake amenities. The, the rail system will also allow our residents to commute to the various parts of the Metroplex and uh, Denton, Louisville, et cetera. Uh, we, one of the main things we're planning to do is stay in line with the 2025 compressive plan recently approved by the city of Louisville. And uh, the purpose of this plan development in the zoning district is to uh, accommodate innovative design concepts and provide flexibility in order to achieve a more desirable development. This site will, is an infill uh, property in highly desirable location. And I, I would say there's not a better site in the Dallas Metroplex than this. And again, this is our vision of what you're gonna see, uh, you know, an experience from the, uh, the Sky Lounge uh, at this property. Actually, this was a, uh, a uh, development of Skylands that was done in Austin and we took a drone up 65 feet and photoshopped the exact view you'll get from the Sky Lounge in our proposed development. We have an award-winning architectural firm and you know we've got a, a great civil engineer. We think we have a uh, uh, one of the best apartment general contractors in the country with NE, fortunately located right here in Louisville. So, um, you know, we're really excited uh, about the development. Did you want to go yeah, to? Let's talk to that. Okay, on the west side, you'll notice we, because of sound uh, attenuation, we have uh, we haven't put any balconies on the west side of the property. Uh, you know, and that also helps. We already have secured financing on this deal, and that was one of the things that we. Uh, uh, considered was sound attenuation from the freeway. Um, and then on the south side, on the bottom, uh, we tried to use our architectural fenestration so that you don't see the parking garage. The parking garage is actually architecturally a part of the building. So, you know, a lot of developments you see, you'll see the concrete spandrels, but we added architectural fenestration to make this a very desirable uh, development. And then you'll see the east side with on, on top, which has the Sky Lounge, and that has a very dramatic view, which <coughs> it was our vision. And then, uh, so, and then on the north side, this actually is gonna be kind of the gateway to the city of Louisville, because as you come south, across that's going to be the first architectural element you see. So, so oh, and this is the our, our, our leasing center, which is on the west side. We also tried to put the leasing center on the west side to minimize some of the residents that, you know, tried, we tried to focus all of our residents to light views and that sort of thing. Oh, and this is the floor plan of our Sky Lounge. It's got a tanning pool, which is only, you know, like uh, eight, 10 inches deep, and they sit in that. The, the main pool is down on the ground, but it has uh, waterfalls. It's got the uh, 
uh, dog park and spa. That's one of the uh, nicest amenities that uh, are in, you know, trend setting today. And then we have an indoor outdoor space with accordion doors and then the uh, state of the art leasing uh, exercise facility. And that's our vision. And uh, I'm open to answer any questions. Uh, my professionals are here to answer any questions you might have. What is the anticipated price points or range price <coughs> range for the units? Um, the, uh, this is going to be a HUD loan and HUD is very conservative and they have already uh, uh, signed off on a dollar 68 cent average rent we feel very strongly, and uh, Sunridge will be the management team on this, and they're highly respected in, with HUD, and he is pretty much guaranteed that we think we'll get $2 on an average. Because the one thing you have to think about this property, it's right there on the water. There's going to be a lot of people that, that want to be on the water, but and then can get into town on the rail. And then there's other people, residents, that uh, are going to be using the marina. And uh, so I think the resident profile on this property is going to be really extraordinary. Okay. Uh, when will construction begin? Uh, assuming we get your approval and we pass the city council, it takes about six to nine months to get through HUD. So I would say summer of 2017. 17. Thank you. And it'll take two years to construct because it's a sizable uh, um, uh, you know, prod, uh, development. Okay. Can you share a little uh, information with me with about Eagle Point Drive, that how the traffic is going to be right there at Eagle Point Drive coming from uh, Sneaky Peaks? Uh-huh. Have y'all looked at the traffic in that area right there? We have looked at the traffic and we tried to design, and that's another reason that we oriented uh, the building, the entrance on the west side so that it'd be easy to get on and off. And with the new improvements <coughs> that's being made at that interchange, uh, we think that, uh, you know, we've looked at the traffic analysis and we feel very comfortable. And, the, uh, and another thing is, uh, a lot of our residents are going to be using the light rail, and I think it's going to be, uh, and HUD just love, loves that aspect. That's one of their main, uh, uh, that was one of their main considerations that, you know, we're trying to be urban and using that, uh, uh, that rail system. So... So some of the <coughs> some of the traffic that you might get on a on a typical development is going to be mitigated because of uh, the light rail. I know I, I'm a I'm a Maverick fan, and I catch the dark there at uh, at Beltway Beltline, and you know it's 30 minutes if I drive I might beat it in five minutes, but if there's a wreck. It could, could be an hour or more. So, the green line. So we, yeah, the green line. Uh, and so uh, uh, I think it, that's a, one of the best uh, amenities that we have for our residents is the availability to walk. And one thing we're, I forgot to mention is we're putting back rack, back, back racks in our uh, garage so that the people can, they can back over to the rail system, leave their bike there, you know, lock it up, and and then commute into the city. Hmm. So we think a lot a lot of the uh, traffic is going to be mitigated from people using that rail system. Is, is it envisioned that the outdoor area will be a public? Also, the public will be able to access that area. Uh, the sky lounge would be restricted to residents and their guests. Now, the trail system that we're connecting to and, uh, is open to the public, and, uh, you know, we think our residents are going to uh, love uh, being able to get down to the water and connecting to the rest of the trail system. So there'll certainly be some interface between non-residents and, and residents.
measurements, but the actual sky lounge would be restricted to uh, the residents there and their guests. Okay, Mr. Crozier, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate the input. Did we, we haven't opened a public hearing. We did, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anyone else uh, wishing to speak? Please come forward, sign in. Okay, if not, we'll close up the public hearing. Uh, commissioners, comments? I'm glad to see the uh, mobile home park uh, disappear, even though it is pretty well hidden from people on the highway and most of Louisville, but uh, I think that's a great improvement, big time. So. It's a nice looking project. Looks good. Yeah, I applaud the, I also applaud the, the trail, getting the trail system involved, and I think that's an important part of that site. All right, then may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Kristen. Second. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Seconded by Alvin. Those in favor signify aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Encourage unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this item will be considered by the City Council at a second public hearing on Monday, August the 1st at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, item number five is reports. Uh, it's a capital improvements advisory committee meeting. Uh, following this one, we'll take a 10-minute adjournment and then reconvene. Uh, may I have a motion to uh, dismiss? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn by Mary Ellen. Second. No, go ahead. Alvin. Seconded by Alvin. Those in favor signify aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned.